generators, AKA alternators. Know the main parts and what they do. Rotor, it is spun by the dry belt. It creates the rotating magnetic field. Stator, this is where electricity is generated. Know that the windings can be connected in two ways, a Y-wound connection or a delta connection. This stator has three leads, easily identified as a delta connection. A Y-wound connection has a fourth lead, known as the stator neutral junction. Which of the connection types is used on a high amp output generator? Here's a diode rectifier bridge. This is where alternating current is converted into direct current. Each of the winding leads on the stator connects to a pair of diodes, a positive biased and a negative biased diode. The positive biased diodes are mounted on the heatsink and the negative biased diodes are attached to the frame. Up next we have brushes, brush holder, and a voltage regulator. Not all generators will have a voltage regulator. Know that most modern vehicles have the voltage regulated by the PCM. In either case, the regulator requires the system voltage as an input to regulate the output voltage. This is called sensing voltage. The regulator varies the amount of field current flowing through the rotor based on the sensed voltage. What can be the outcome of high resistance in the sensing circuit? Know how to test the generator. After verifying that the battery is good and performing a visual inspection, do a voltage output test. Start the engine, connect your DMM leads to the battery, and bring the engine RPMs to between 1500 and 2000. The multimeter reading should be between 13.5 and 14.5 volts. If the reading is within these numbers, perform a loaded voltage output test. Turn on the headlights and HVAC blower motor to the highest speed. Bring the engine RPMs to about 2000. The voltage reading should stay above 13 volts. These two tests are a quick way to check the charging system. What if the voltage output test was below 13.5 volts? We could have a bad voltage regulator, bad generator, a loose dry belt, excessive resistance in the circuit, or a bad PCM. Know how to voltage drop test the charging system. In this example, we'll voltage drop test the generator output circuit. The setup is the same as a loaded voltage output test. Only change is moving the negative lead to the generator B plus terminal. Voltage drop from the circuit should be less than 0.7 volts. To test the ground side, positive lead goes on negative battery terminal post. Negative lead goes on the generator case. This is with the engine running, unloaded, reading should be less than 0.2 volts. What if the voltage output test was above 14.5 volts? This could be due to a bad voltage regulator, bad generator, bad battery, or high resistance in the sensing circuit. Know how to perform the current output test using a VAT40 or similar tool. This test will safely determine the maximum output of the generator by using a carbon pile. Know that the reading should be within 10% of the generator's rating. What can happen if you fulfill the generator without a load? No charging could be from an open in the circuit or a missing dry belt. Know how to check the condition of the belt. Modern vehicles have an automatic tensioner Many of these have a wear indicator. If the mark on the tensioner is aligned to the mark on the other side, the belt is worn and needs to be replaced. Know how to check the condition of the diodes using a lab scope. 
With the engine at idle, connect one lead to the generator B plus terminal, the other to the battery B plus terminal. The lab scope is set to read low AC voltage. This is what a good reading looks like. One thing to note is the official method is to connect the lab scope to generator B plus terminal and the ground. This U scope requires a positive to positive connection. What would an open diode waveform look like? And that covers the meat and potatoes of what you should know regarding generators for the ASC A6 test. Subscribe in order to motivate me to make more. Next video will cover computer inputs.